safe I'm the Lux to your Superman Wishing I was Lois Lane And how many times have you tried to stop me? God, I just don't know Hello everybody and welcome to the Neuro Clock News. I am your host, Brother Neuro, Dick Coughlin, or whatever the fuck, and I'd like to welcome to this where I go through a special selection of stories, uh, The most of which are the things that slip by under the radar that you don't notice, but that just remind you a little bit more that humanity, one way or another, is fucked. Now in the last video I made a rule of trying not to mention any stories concerning Brexit or Trump because I guess my assumption is that whatever side of the ocean, whatever part of the world you live in, you are probably sick to death of hearing about both of those things and you could go, if you could go one more day, you could go a million fucking years without having to hear either. So I'm going to try and stick to that, although it, you know, if it's sort of like, I'm not sticking to it too religiously, but let's crack on. Now those of you who remember the last episode, you may remember I opened with a uh, very un unfortunate story of a young man who, uh, due to his very, very uh, restrictive diet, had unfortunately uh, gone blind and deaf and he, uh, like his bones were starting to disappear. You know, quite a serious, uh, you, know, f you know, but you will pay the price if you're a fussy eater. Well, in this story, I'm going to open with something that's on the other end of the spectrum, but it's not really, there's nothing funny in the story itself. It was a young man, a uh, 17-year-old lad, who went to a, a, a burger chain in this country called Byron Burgers, and he ordered a buttermilk chicken burger, and then... He was. There was an ingredient in in the uh, in the um, in the cut in the coating of the chicken that he was allergic to, and he killed over and died. Now that is not that is not funny. That is not funny in the slightest. However, what is kind of amusing is Byron Burger's uh, take. Who apparently, you know, response to this, uh, the response to this from Byron Burger's is where the actual humour lies, because they seem to have hired this new PR company called. Uh, called all the cu the customer is always a stupid cunt because their response was literally to say, well he should have uh, he should have inquired and asked about any allergens before ordering. Well, yes, fucking duh. I think I think we know that. I think we uh, uh, is this really the time to fucking you know? Can we not? You know? Can you just say say whoopsie? Our bad. Here's lots of money. Right? Not, not, you know, let's not, let's not victim blame on a kid who forgot to ask for allergens. Please! You may also remember that the second story from the last episode of the Neuroclock News was about this insane and very lonely vegan woman who lived in Australia who, uh, you know, who, who was suing her neighbours for uh, having barbecues uh, and and not somehow restricting the smoke like from going into the general atmosphere near her head. There, there was one or two, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? V uh, uh, cunts? No, other vegans who and I do and I have done some stories, but it's not my fault. I just look at what's in the news. But there was a story. Let's look at the other end of it because I'm not going to bash vegans uh, this this week. And uh, you know, I'm going to look at this other story. This, is, this was just the headline, uh, one in five Brits think goat's milk and eggs are vegan. You could look on the one side of saying that, well, that means that 80% of people understand what is, you know, required, which is probably a lot more than there ever has been. Um, you know, but, and, and whilst you might think that one in five people, you know, you know not realising that goat's milk and eggs is, uh, is not vegan, I have to confess, I have to be honest here with you, that this one kind of threw me for a loop when I found out about this because I didn't even know that goats could lay eggs. You learn something new every day. Now September was a very it was you know very unique month because this was the month when we got a Friday the thirteenth and given the last few years of politics that we you know and, and the, everything we've been through in this country and I'm sure you know Friday the thirteenth is the day when uh, something really bad is supposed to happen. Well, welcome to and I sat there and thought, listen, I'm not going in for your superstitious but like there's nothing that could happen on Friday the thirteenth that would make me fucking 
motherfucking bastards. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Robinson was released from prison on Friday the 13th of this month. And uh, I intend to make this hopefully one of the few occasions. I think I've had, those of you who followed me in closely this year, I think we can all agree, I've had, I've, I've had my full fill of Tommy this year. I'm all Tommied out this year. So I think, but I think I really should address this. You know, I think I should address the fact that he's been uh, released. Now he was, re and as you can see from this was what he looked like when he was released. It's nice to know, Tommy, that he hit puberty. And I don't know about you, but that is a much gingerer beard than I was fucking expecting, my friend. He's been released having served just under nine weeks of his nine month sentence. Because you might be thinking that's quite a fucking, you know, nine, you know, didn't he get quite a, but yeah, he's done less than nine weeks. So just over two months of of a nine month sentence. He got released, uh, you know, apparently he'd been released on, you know, for good behavior. Um, not too difficult to get released for good behavior in prison when you're spending most of it in solitary confinement. You know, probably because within the first week, according to several reports, he got knocked out in the shower by a 70 year old inmate who wasn't Muslim, by the way, because they would have definitely fucking mentioned it in the newspapers if he was. He got knocked out by a 70 year old inmate by apparently acting like he was a big, you know, a celebrity, or sorry, in the shower, right? So he got knocked out in the showers by a 70 year old man, or as I like to say, Tommy Robinson got fisted by a pensioner in the showers within the first week of being in prison. And I've only got one thing to say about this. I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not, you know, if he's, if they've de 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 deemed that he's, you know, you know, fit to be released, that's fine. I'm not gonna say, I've, I've heard nothing else about him since, but I will say this, I want you to remember, do you remember before he went to prison. Do you remember this was the guy who said that him being this, this, him going to prison, being sent to prison for nine months, right, to jail was a quote, death sentence. That they were sending him there because this was a death sentence. It's not the first time he's described, you know, being sent to prison as that. This was the guy, do you remember, who made a video begging Donald Trump to allow him to go to America and seek asylum as a political asylum seeker. Do you remember that? Do you remember this guy? Do you remember how he was? This is the guy who calls himself the enemy of the state, who believes that the establishment is out to get him, who's just walked free, having spent most of his fucking t prison sentence, most of the just over eight weeks that he spent in prison, in solitary confinement for his own protection, in case any fucking in case any granddads come by and feel like knocking him out, right? You know, he's been, and he's been released having done less than a quarter of his sentence. Now, does that sound like a man who the state and the establishment is trying to fucking kill? It sounds like the opposite to me. Now, moving on for Tommy Robinson to a uh, another small group of uh, fringe far-right fucking nutters in this country, and it's an organisation who thankfully died off quite a while ago. In fact, they died off shortly after pretty much the uh, murder of Joe Cox um, a couple of years ago. But um, but they, they are still they are still around and they are still trying. And this is one of those stories that sounds really bad when you when it starts. But the more you sort of look into it and delve into it, the actually the more sort of heartwarming it, it will be for you. This is the headline. Far right Britain first patrolling beaches to catch migrants. Now that sounds like that sounds quite you know quite uh, you know quite unnerving, quite worrying that these hordes of. Uh, but well, let me show you the picture that goes above that headline. Yeah, far right Britain first patrolling. Uh, three unemployed racist cunts are walking up and down Folkestone Beach. Is what that is. That's, uh, that's just three geezers stood on, it could, it could be it anyway, that's what it is. It's, I mean, this, that you know there's only three of them because they've had to photograph, you know, two, two of them, one of them twice, right? Like the bald cunt there, you know, he's quite clearly the same motherfucker, right? As he's posing there with his, binoc with his binoculars the wrong fucking way around, probably, right? Now, but as you get into this story, right, let me just delve into it right, and just go, go with it. It gets funnier with each step. Far-right group Britain First has set up Patriot patrols on the country's beaches to catch migrants. Now, this was a couple of weeks ago, and I've heard nothing since. So, they can't be doing too well, either that or that is 
the Patriot Patrols. Uh, it says it is determined to stop people who undertake the dangerous journey from Britain to France on small boats from landing on our shores. I don't know if that means, like, you know, I mean, I don't know what, whether that means they're just going to sit there and hold the boat out. That they don't want you to land on the fucking shores, right? You know, I mean, I'm pretty sure... If you've made the dangerous, particularly considering these boats, we're told, each one of them's got a hundred bloody people on, I'm pretty sure a hundred knackered, starving Syrian refugees could pretty much easily take out Zippy George and Bungle here. Calling it Operation White Cliffs, <laughs> the far-right group focuses on the beaches of South England. Because they're smart, they've worked out. They've been in Inverness for the last... Six weeks. I mean, hold on. It's the other way. This is this is the best bit. Wearing high visibility jackets and carrying torches, torches and binoculars, they search the area looking for migrants. What you're not? What do you mean looking for? You're not going to spot a boat. Well done, by the way. Wearing high visibility jackets so these fuckers can see you from the fucking horizon. They'll be like, oh no, let's keep going. There's three. I, I don't know about you. I can't believe health and safety has managed to infect Britain first. Torches and binoculars, like, looking for them. It sounds like they're going crabbing, like they're just lifting up fucking rock. What do you think they're going to be doing? Hiding under a giant pebble or something? Holding their brick gaffer tape to the underside of the fucking ferry? It went on to add that if they did find migrants, and this is the scary part, folks, they would alert the police and the coast guards immediately. Oh, no! Oh, we've only, we've been running away from ISIS, but not the Coast Guard, no! The Coast Guard, do you know what the Coast Guard is going to do if you contact them, you fucking marrow-faced pillocks? They're going to fucking rescue them! That's what they're going to do. Well done! You've just made their lives a little bit easier. You've just made it easier for them. You said they weren't going to let them get to your shores. What do you think the Coast Guard's going to do? Drag them all the way back to France, you fucking penis. But for the interests of balance, folks, I think it's fair to say it's not just uh, people on the far right, the obvious places where they've had issues with racism this this month. No, a couple of weeks over the last couple of weeks, uh, one unlikely candidate who you wouldn't think getting in trouble uh, with racism was uh, uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who got in a bit of a stick when a photo of him at a Halloween party 20 years ago uh, blacked up or browned up as uh, dressed as Aladdin. Um, you know, you know, emerged, and, uh, and and I'm going to say this: I don't think it was the the one blackface photo. It wasn't even the second one that they found. It was the fact that it was there was at least three. Right now, I'm not going to say that Justin Trudeau is on the same level as any of these are. You know, the, these other people who you know got you know done for you know who got found to have blackface. There was a Republican. Uh, you know, um, politician, you know, earlier th this year, who you may remember, who was found to have worn blackface. I mean, that was about, you know, 20, 30 years uh, earlier than this. And uh, and I didn't see people making the same excuses, you know, that they, that they did for it. But that's never, that's never, makes no never minds, right? I don't think it was that. I think the problem really is that after the third incident of Justin Trudeau blacking up was found, he was asked by a journalist, understandably, um, Mr. Trudeau, and I'm paraphrasing here, but this is the gist of what he said. They said, how many times, how many other times in your life have you blacked up? And he gave, and Justin Trudeau gave the worst answer you can give if you are a white man of any real age to the question, how many times in your life have you blacked up? And he said, I don't know. Now, that is the worst answer you can give. If he'd said 10,964 times, that would have been a better answer than I don't know. Because what he's effectively saying is, I, you know, I don't know is not an answer, to, is not the answer anyone should give to the question, how many times in your life have you worn blackface? If someone said, how many pairs of trousers have you bought? That's a, oh, too many to remember. How many times have you eaten eaten you know, fish in your life. Oh, I could, could, could have found, you know, you know, I couldn't possibly even begin to estimate it's that many. The question, how many times have you worn blackface? Because what you're saying is, it's too many for me to remember. So just a tip there, 
if you ever get caught out, just even if you're not sure, just give any answer, any number. It's better than I don't fucking know. Now, remember that thing I said about no stories about Brexit? Well, this one is kind of a wee bit... Okay, fuck it. For some reason, this month, uh, the last person anybody wanted, asked, or even, you know, even required to, you know, come and stick their fucking whore in, made a return after years of being, as you know, Danny Dyer so eloquently put, up in Spain with his trotters up. Uh, David Cameron returned to the scene, you know, not because he wanted to, you know, you know, do anything, any proactive. You know, he's got a book to sell. Yes, he's got a book, right? And unless that book is called Fuck to Country, Fuck to Pig, I'm not fucking interested. But he did come back and he decided to have <clears throat> a bit of a pop at Boris Johnson, and uh, he, he, he decided to have a pop of him uh, in this way here. Uh, Johnson is a liar who only backed leave to help his career. Now, here's the thing. That is true. That is a, that is a statement that I am not going to quibble or disagree with in a sentence, in a se in a, in for a minute. But, David, let me ask you. Do you think that statement feels a tad empty and shallow? when you consider that it's being said by the man who is the cunt who decided we needed to have a referendum in the first place and who then backed the Remain side and then fucking campaigned on its behalf and then fucking lost and then within 12 minutes had handed his notice in and had wandered off and do 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 and then by the way, oh, 21st of September, it's, and it's, it was the, this, this year, 25th of September, uh, 21st of September, it was the four year anniversary of that time David Cameron was in the newspapers because apparently he fucked a pig month, which by the way, is a news story with absolutely no you know, no, you know, no evidence, no proof whatsoever. It is a complete and utter fabrication by Lord Ashcroft, who's bitter that the Tories took 10 million off him and then didn't make him a member of the cabinet like they promised. That aside, this is 2019 and we can believe whatever the fuck we want. And if we want to believe that you fucked a pig, we will because fuck you, motherfucker. But don't you come swanning in here and start telling us things we've already known for a fucking long time. Thank And, and the, when the reason we've got them in the first place is because of you. You fucking painted egg face looking motherfucker. And just to show you again, for balance, that I'm not going to say... That I, there is one story by a Remainer, you know, about a Remainer, that I have to just pull up, and it's, just, it's a very simple one. It was, this, it was this guy, Michael Morpurgo, on Fighting Brexit. I've been spat at. It's almost civil war. It's not, is it, Michael? It's not almost civil war, is it? Being spat at. I would say there's a huge chasm and canyon of violence between being gobbed at, having someone hock a greenie at you, and a civil war. Calm down, you hysterical girl's blouse. Now, one story you might remember from last, uh, the last New O'Clock News was the story uh, was one of the stories towards the end when I talked about this woman who you know who'd written an op-ed in the Guardian. She was seventy-five years old and she'd never had an orgasm, and she wanted to know what can I do about it. Now, I don't know if you thought of anything. I haven't. I gave her a ring. I looked on Tinder, couldn't find her. But um, interestingly, uh, in the time since then. Uh, in The Guardian, there's been another op-ed which I've got a funny feeling might have been written by this woman's husband. I lose my erection during sex with my wife. Am I overthinking it? Are you overthinking it? Dude, you've thought about it enough to write an article which you've now had published in The Guardian. If this is not overthinking it, I don't know what the fuck is. Look in your fucking email spam folder. There's plenty of companies there who can help you out with this one. Now, I don't know whether or not this one is serious or not, but all I know is it pissed off cunts like Piers Morgan and Graham Linehan, so I'm fucking going with it. Mark Ronson uh, comes out as sapiosexual while discussing split from ex-wife. 
Okay, that's first of all, talking about talking about your ex-wife split on television is not fucking on, Mark. Okay, have a bit of respect. But sapiosexual. This is apparently somebody who is attracted to somebody's mind and their intellect regardless of their gender. Which, given the state of this country, from what I've seen listening to LBC radio callers, you might as well be asexual, Mark, at this stage. And just to show you how still uptight we are when it comes to the issue of trying to, you know, open people's minds about sexuality. This is a story that in and of itself could be, you know, quite interesting, just, uh, you know, just as an historical piece, but they have to turn it into some kind of, you know, sort of weird sexual, you know, were they, weren't they? I'll show you. Hand-holding skeletons dubbed the lovers of Medina were both men. Ah! Two ancient skeletons known as the lovers of Modena were buried hand in hand who were both men, according to new research. Yes, they found their cocks. Yeah. The pair, who were believed to have died between the 4th and 6th centuries, uh, had previously been thought to be male and female. Upon discovery, mass media had immediately assumed they were male and female, because obviously skeletons would hold hands. If that was, you know, holding hands is the sign that you've obviously been nobbing this person. Considering they died between, you know, there's two centuries worth of le le you know, leverage, it could be like one of, the one of them fell on top of the other cunt months or years later. They added the burial was a unique representation of commitment between two men. They could also have been family members, the research said. Oh, so it's okay. So, so we have to throw incest in there as well. Fully white, you know, d d two people holding hands does not mean they were shagging or in love. They might have hated each other. They might have beat them out. They, they, who knows? There's a million and one pissing reasons why two skeletons' hands could be overlapped. And while it could not be ruled out that the pair were lovers, it was unlikely they would have been buried hand in hand because of attitudes to homosexuality at the time. Oh, really? You know, even even when the idea that there's these two skeletons who they have built this fake love story behind simply because their hands were in a bloody twined, simply because of that, now when it turns out they were both men, it's like, oh, no, no, it's very unlikely. We can't even handle several fucking you know, one and a half thousand year old skeletons turning out to be turning out to be gay what what chance have the people who are still alive got lighten up now this new story is not exactly new but it's one that i saved ages ago i sort of bookmarked it and then i realized i hadn't actually covered it in a video and i thought you know and the reason and the reason i wanted to cover it now is because i just came across it and this is an example of when it's something from the internet from my internet world and something from my sort of non-internet world collide and what i'm about to show you is a wonderful moment in 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 journalism with this is when the daily mail discovered incels now, I want to make it clear, we are going to learn nothing from this whatsoever, but there is a one of, there's one of the most brilliant moments, epic moments of, sh of most, you know, un unsubtle shade thrown by the Daily Mail towards incels. And any, any opportunity I get, you know, to show you that the Daily Mail, even the Daily Mail sometimes, you know, realises some things are awful, so awful, you need to just destroy them, is one that I'm willing to say, because I do give a bit of a hard time. But it was this headline, the desperate men choosing to be chemically castrated to suppress their sexual urges after years of rejection, constant erections, or because they just don't get women. Now, I, 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 I'm going to read on, but it just the, 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 the bit that got me there was the was the constant erections. Because if you're still able to get them, I mean, aren't all, aren't, aren't we all constant? I mean, you can't have one non-stop. It's got to end at some point, which got me hooked in, so I read the story. Desperate and frustrated men are taking to the internet, as if that's a new fucking thing. In forums on Reddit, Quora, and medical websites, the anonymous men share their reasons for wanting to cut off their libido. 
They include being frustrated after years of rejection, not understanding women, and being constantly distracted by their insatiable sexual appetites. In some cases, men in sexless marriages who want to stay with their wives are considering getting rid of their urges to spare themselves the agony of not being touched. The agony of not being touched. Brilliant. Others are young men in their 20s who are convinced they may never get a woman to sleep with them. And after seeing their posts posted in the fucking Daily Mail, I bet that's going to fucking increase their chances. One described himself on Cora as a 25-year-old who had never had sex and could not go on with the constant reminder of what he was missing out on. And then it just goes on, then it's just got a series of random quotes uh, from various posts uh, on the internet. I'm sick of being a virgin, yet horny all the time. I can't go on like this. Right now, apart from the virgin part, most men call that being alive, my friend. Right? Another man claiming to be a college student wrote on a forum on Reddit, it was always awful seeing a beautiful woman and knowing I would never be able to get with her. Oh, fucking hell. I'm not saying I deserve anything. Pfft, yeah, right, all right. And I certainly don't like to objectify them in such a way. But, it's very rare the but is coming from someone the story's about. It's normally someone in the comment section. But the desires were strong. Another man claiming to be 20, as if that's a thing, right, said he was sick of longing for straight men who would never sleep with him. Yes, because incels can be gay as well, apparently. I mean, it only took them two quotes before they got to the gay incel, so credit to the Daily Mail on that. I've never found one before in my life, so fair play. I guess they had to find one. Straight men who would never sleep with him and not having a high enough success rate with other gay men. Right, I mean, you're sick of longing for straight men, right? Well, this is how sexuality works, mate. You can't just, you know, you've been given this hand in life. You've got to make, you know, you're making life. There's incel and then there's this. I suppose I'm happy to have experienced having a sex drive O oh, Icarus, fly ye not so close to the sun, but the law of diminishing returns took place rather quickly. Being a sexual person for one month would have told me everything I needed to know about sexuality. Yes, why can't we just have that? Let's just be sexual for a month. It took you a month to work this out. Since then, producing testosterone and having sex... Who describes this in such a way? Who describes producing testosterone? As he says it as if it's something he's doing. Like it's his fucking, like it's an achievement of his. Producing testosterone and having sexual desire has brought me 10 units of pain for every one unit of pleasure. Now, I don't know how you measure any of these. I don't know what unit it is. I don't know what unit or measurement. We're using millimetres, cubic hectares. I don't know, right? But the fact that, you know, but the fact that he's put it in that way. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that's... I'd like to assume that's hyperbolic, but I don't know with these fuckers. Then he goes, but he goes on even more. For every orgasm, there's been three cases of unrequited love. Does that include ones you've had on your own? I mean, three cases? Three for every... Does that mean if you jack it six times in a day, you've got 18 knockbacks? You know, this is the thing with incels and that. It's like, I, 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 you know, I've dealt with some... In my time, I've dealt with some of the worst fucking people, you know, with the worst ideas. But even at their lowest... Even at their lowest, I was able, in most cases, to find some level of humanity in them that I could sympathise with, where I can see there's still a person there that I can... You know, that I can reach in and grab, I can see past the monster. But these fuckers, all I want to do is beat them around the head with an iron bar for half an hour every fucking day. Then chuck them into a fucking freezing cold room naked. Give them an handful of muesli twice a week. Right, and just beat them around the head and then drag them out after a month and say, You happy now? Cheer up. For every positive interaction with another man, I'm gay. 
just in case anyone on the incel forum assumed he might have been a woman, or he's got so desperate he's just moved on to blokes, even if he's not interested. Right? There's been 20 awkward encounters. Okay, it's one in 20 now. I'm 20, 21 in less than a month, and still have never had sex, and there's no end in sight to my virgindom. No end in sight. You're 20. 20. You should read that article about that poor cow last month. 75, she's never even had... Well, I suppose that means she's had no unrequited love if she hasn't even an orgasm at 75. Or the geezer earlier on in this same video who couldn't keep it up for his... You know, I mean, there are problems in the world, my friend. But being 20 and not being, you know, not finding anyone to let you do it on them yet is not one of them. That man said he hoped he would have the sexually satisfied when he went to college. But it never happened. You know, you, okay, sexuality, my friend, is never satisfied. There is no such thing. Right? It's like when women say, I want a man who's not interested in sex. Well, find a man who's just had some. You've got two minutes at best. I soon learned that my sexual market based value in the gay world as a fat, introverted black man with a small penis is close to zero. Okay, let's just make this clear. The small penis is really all you needed on that one, okay? To give you a lower... Okay, being an introverted black man, or a black introvert, but, you know, your race really is not an issue. Although I suppose, you know, you know, they put this in this article just to show that, you know, this, this is probably confusing to a Daily Mail reader because they've now got an envisaged little world where a black man with a small penis exists, you know? It's nice to know you're at least destroying some stereotypes, mate. There's some positive to, positivity to come out of this. And then, apropos of nothing in this article, the Daily Mail just throw this up here. What is chemical castration? As if to say, if you're wondering, lads, help your fucking selves. Chemical castration is a form of hormone... I don't need to read this fucking thing. You know what it fucking says. But they just chuck it out there as if to say, yeah... You know, your losers fucking have at it. They even link to a website at the bottom of the article. Right? This is one of the few Daily Mail comment sections where the, the comments are actually rinsing these fuckers. And when you're getting rinsed by... When you are, when you are white... I know they focus mainly on the, on the gay black guy with the small penis, but it's the Daily Mail. You've got to give them some things, right? But the fact is, the fact that you know, when you are... You know, when you, you, you are such, when you're a white, entitled, heterosexual male, you know, which is what the majority of, the majority of these fuckers are, and you can't even get a, a, get a bit of sympathy from the Daily Daily Mail, who are basically saying, here, chemically castrate yourself. You've got to consider. I think they're right. I'm with them. Don't even chemically do it. Pair of garden shears. Snip. And we go from one extreme with the incels to this headline, which I think pretty much speaks for itself. Man admits to having drunken sex with traffic cone in train station lift. And if you want to know, right, next time someone comes up to you and says, how come when a woman comes forward and accuses a man of sexual assault, why do they always assume he's guilty? That, that headline right there, right? For the start, man admits he came forward to that. I don't know whether he was bragging about it. I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what the standards for traffic cones are. But I like the fact it was class, but I like the fact they, they qualified this man having drunken sex, right? Just so you don't think that this might have been some nutter who just goes out stone cold sober and fucks traffic. No, this man was pretty fucking, pretty fucking blitz. But in another headline, it said man caught. So I want to know what's the fucking truth here. I want to know, because now if we're at a stage where men are getting me tooed by traffic cones, right, we might as well just call it in. Just hand your keys in now, lads. Just say, that's it. We're done. It's over. Earlier last month, during one of the presidential, uh, Democratic presidential candidate debates, uh, a guy called Beto O'Rourke uh, made a thing saying that, yeah, basically coming forward saying, yes, he's going to take away your, 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 uh, your AR-15s, he's going to come, he's coming for your assault rifles, right? Now, this obviously, now, he hasn't got a chance in winning, so it didn't really cause as much of a stir as it should have done. But one of the geezers who came forward was a guy called Mike Huckabee, 
right? It was, ugh, oh God. You know, who came forward with this tweet saying, dozens are killed every year on skateboards. Thousands injured. Hey, Beto, heck yes, we're going to take your skateboard. Now, I just, I know this is petty, but the fact he put heck yes, because he's such a good Christian, right? He's okay with fucking assault rifles being legalized, but he won't say hell in a fucking tweet. Right, first of all, dozens are not killed every year on skateboards. Right? At best estimate, on average, you know, every year, maybe, maybe less than 10. But you're not just killed on a skateboard. It's generally something, someone on a skateboard is hit by something else, like a lorry or something like that. But also, when you consider that in America, I think there's like, on average, there's about 50,000 people that are fucking skateboard. If the level, if the ratio of deaths there wouldn't be any really massive call. If you if you go back, what I'm saying is go back in time to any massacre. Go to the Columbine School Massacre. Give those, take those guns off those kids and give them skateboards, and let's see how well they fucking do. Right? Go, you know, get, you know take the, that geezer in New Zealand who fucking shot up the Christchurch mosque. Take his fucking gun off him. Give him a skateboard. See how many Muslim bodies are laying on the floor at the end of the fucking day. But I, you know, I know this is a divisive issue, but as a British person and as someone who hates fucking guns, I thought I'd like to give you an example right, of what British gun crime looks like. Right? And this is a story uh, from, from, about a month, from a couple of months ago, and it's actually not a story you would have seen in the national news because this was a local, this was in my local paper. This is as far as this story went. And in America, this, but because it's local news and they still got to sensationalise, they've got to make you want to read, right? they, they sort of got, they, they, you, you, as the story goes on, they kind of do it oh they kind of you can just realize they've they've amped this up a little bit more than it is so but i want to say give you an example uh for people who live in america this is an example this is how far british gun crime tends to go so there's the so there's the headline couple terrified by threatening gunmen after brawl outside market harbor pub now that sounds that sounds really fucking no that sounds oh my god like market harbor this tiny little town in the midlands right they're threatening gunmen oh god this is this sounds, sounds shocking right there then then you into it like, you read the top bit like, a teenager who threatened a man with a gun during a saturday night brawl in market harbor you know will spend his 19th birthday in prison the frightening incident happened at 2:50 a.m. on march 16th when a fright when a fight erupted outside a pub in church street so this is quite Fuck it, this sounds quite fucking insane. You know, and you're like, wow, a gunman? A 19 year old gunman outside the pub? This, this sounds absolutely ter- Let's Let's look at more into the into the story. Let's go Let's go a bit more. Uh, Heathcote said to the helper, Do you really want to go there? before lifting up his top to reveal the handgun in his waistband. He then pulled the weapon out, causing those who saw it to fear for their safety. Oh my god, this sounds. This is going to be fucking exciting. It was a very realistic looking firearm, was in fact a non-working air pistol. A non a broken air pistol. Now, that there's there's another word there's another phrase you could use for the for something that's a non for something that's a broken air pistol, right? Uh, and that is, you could say, it's a, a a gun-shaped lump of plastic. This guy was waving a broke. I mean, even if it's an air pistol, what's the worst you can do? You've got to be about within ten feet. And even if he got you, be like, "Ow, dude! Ow, that really got. God damn, that smart. Jesus, that's a bit much in it, right? You, you have to have his jacket off for that." So this guy was actually, it wasn't a gunman, and it wasn't a gun, it was a, it was, it was a l- realistic looking broken air pistol. And then you get into the actual fucking actual story of the guy's excuses, right, of, it, of him saying uh, what, of why he had the damn thing. Heathcote said he had not intended to use it, not that you could have done anyway, it was unloaded. So it was an unloaded broken air pistol. 
and he was taking it back to a friend. Because, of course, you would do, wouldn't you? You'd go out, you'd take it to a friend. Before I go to a friend, at 2.30 in the morning, I'm just going to go out and get hammered and go to a club with this fucking non-working, unloaded air pistol shoved in the front of me fucking trousers. Uh, Ms. Dodds, his, his, his counsel, said the defendant also told officers he produced the gun in an attempt to calm the situation down outside the pub. Right? He then goes on to say that he was actually had popped out to go to the post office but stopped off for a drink on the way. I mean, this guy went out in the afternoon to the post office took an unworking air pistol and ended up in a club at 2.30 going, hey everyone, fucking easy. He might as well have been doing that. And going, pew, pew. And that, my friends, is British gun crime. Just something to think about. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this video. My name's Brother Neuro. You've been watching the Neuro Clock News. Good night, may God be less. And where there's no sense, there's no feeling. Take care. I'm neither a human. Saved. I'm the Lux to your Superman Wishing I was Lois Lane And how many times have you tried